Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be learning about Central and South American mythology, so that's going to be stories from the Incan civilization, the Mayan, and the Aztec civilization. So the Aztecs were in southern Mexico, and the Mayans are what is what was part of southern Mexico and what is now Central America, and then the Incas were along South America and that, and that continent along the borders of like Chile and Peru. So the Mayan civilization existed about 1,300 years ago, from about 400 BC to 900 AD. Uh, as we talked about, it covered most of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, but it also stretched down to parts of El Salvador and Honduras and Central America. Um, it was an incredible civilization, which collapsed in the early, 19, or early 900s, but we're not really sure why. All of a sudden, the Mayans started abandoning their large cities. Some people think that it was because of overpopulation or food shortages or from war, but really we're not really sure. Just all of a sudden, their cities started being abandoned and they kind of disappeared. Um, two of their largest cities were called Tikal and Copan, um, and they were known for their highly advanced architecture, the step pyramids, which you've seen before, um, but also their calendar. You might remember the, the Mayan calendar was the one that was supposed to... Uh, tell us about the end of the world in December of 2012. Um, the Mayan religion had a, a pantheon that consisted of many gods and goddess, goddesses, all that were associated with natural phenomena. Um, Mayan religion focused heavily on ritual sacrifice. Basically, their idea was that humans existed and were put on earth to nourish the gods with our blood. We, they actually needed our blood to stay alive. So they would often sacrifice cr prisoners of war and criminals, um, and were, were sacrificed to the gods, and priests would even engage in slight bloodletting, so they would like open up a gash on their arm or their leg and, or, and offer a small amount of blood to the gods in exchange for advice or for prayers or for favors. Um, the Mayans believed that the heavens were these 13 separate layers that were stacked above the earth, and that below those heavens was the earth, and it rested on the back of a giant turtle. You may find that somewhat similar to the Iroquois creation myth about how the world is created on a turtle's back. And then below the earth was Shibalba, which was a nine-layered underworld. And basically there was a massive tree that stretched through all of these realms, all the way from the bottom of Shibalba to the very top of the heavens. Um, and that they believed that the souls of the dead traveled along, these, along this tree through the different worlds. Uh, this is a picture of the, the kind of Mayan universe. So here in the middle, we've got that giant tree. And up here at the top, we have some of our Mayan gods that are in here. And then this would be the earth where people are stuck. And then down here would be the different levels of Shibalba with the gods of the dead, as well as and the various demons and things that you would experience through there. Um, a couple of the Mayan gods. So we have Itzamana, he was the chief god or the ruler of the heavens. He was uh, the god of night and day. He was the god of the other gods. And this, I believe, is him. Um, Ichel was Itzamana's wife. And this is her up here. She often has a snake on her head. I'm not really sure why. But she was the goddess of fertility and pregnancy and childbirth. Pretty standard um, fertility goddess. We also have Hunhunapu, who was the god of maize, corn, and of various plant life, which would be very important to the Mayans, as maize would be the standard and staple for most of their food. Um, we have Hunapu and Shibalanke, which are the sons of Hunhunapu. Um, we have Kinich Ahau, he's the sun god. We have Kukukan, also sometimes known as Quetzalcoatl. Um, Quetzalcoatl was a god that was in two religions, uh, which is often depicted as a feathered serpent, and he was the god of learning and of different crafts. We have Chak, he was the rain god. And then we have Sizen and Apuk, and I believe this is Apuk, um, and they were the gods of death and destruction, so they would have lived in Shibalba. Uh, next we have the Incas, and this was a huge empire which lasted from about 1463 to 1572. So a substantially more recent empire as well compared to the Mayans. Um, they were a highly advanced civilization. They had a population of 12 million pe people. Um, this picture here is the ruins of one of their massive cities called Machu Picchu. Uh, and as you can see, it was highly extensive. Um, and beautiful. would have been a, a beautiful place to live. Um, they had a robust oral tradition, much like the uh, North Native Americans. Um, and basically what would happen is they would take over a conquered city, and rather than keeping it under military uh, under like military watch, they would instead make the cities pay tribute, 
And often what they do is they would take the children of conquered leaders and make them live in Cusco, the capital of the Incan Empire. And that way the children were raised as kind of Incas and it made the leaders of those conquered cities not want to uh, rebel against them. It's actually a very smart thing to do. So in about the middle 15, mid to late 1500s, their empire falls to the Spanish conquistadors that came in. Basically, there was a civil war between two Inca kings who were brothers that weakened the empire and allowed the Spanish to just kind of sweep in and take over. Um, the Inca religion had huge, nor enormous, lavish temples, and they would often cover them in precious metals that were associated with that god. So, like, the walls in the Temple of the Sun were completely covered in gold, while the walls in the Temple of the Moon were completely covered in silver. They were very rich uh, uh, empire as well. Um, their religion centered around Inti and Ilapu, um, the sun and weather, basically, because the Inca were a largely agricultural society. So the sun and rain and all those kinds of things would be very important to them and would be something that they would focus on in terms of their prayers. Um, there was uh, one Inca king, basically, who claimed he had a very close relationship with the god Viracocha, and that caused Viracocha to be more worshipped a little bit later on. Uh, generally, Viracocha was depicted as a monster, but with very pale white skin. Um, and that might be the reason why some of the Incas believed that the Spaniards, when they came in, were actually gods because of their pale skin. Uh, the Inca religion also used sacrifice, but not humans. Instead, they would sacrifice animals and food and various goods to the gods instead of people. They didn't think that blood was as necessary as the Mayans did. Uh, a couple of the Inca gods, so we have Viracocha, the god of all gods, as I've already kind of mentioned. Inti, he's the sun god. He's also the ancestor of the Incas. They believe that they all came from Inti. And Mamakilia, who's the moon goddess and Inti's wife. She's thought of as the mother of the Incas. Ilapu was the god of weather and rain, as we've talked about a little bit already. Kuichu is the god of the rainbow. Pacamama is the earth mother, and this would be her right here. Uh, and then Mamakoka is the sea, the sea mother. And this right here is Mamakilia. Uh, lastly, we have the Aztec civilization. So this was land lasted from about 1428 to 1520, so roughly similar to the Incas. Um, their city capital was Tenochtitlan, which was built on an island in the middle of the lake, and it was beautiful. It had great, huge palaces, enormous temples, floating gardens. It's just incredible that they created this so late. Um, they had a very complex writing system, and they kept extensive records of everything that happened to them. But they also had a very strong oral tradition, um, which mostly focused on the stories about their ancestors and the various gods and their interactions. The Aztecs studied astronomy, they knew over a hundred species of medicinal plants, and they also were eventually conquered by the Spanish, but a very advanced civilization. Aztec religion focused even more heavily on human sacrifice than the Incas did. Warriors' whole job was basically to capture enemy soldiers and slaves that they could then use for virtual sacrifice. Um, most of the sacrifices were made to the gods Huitzilipochtli and Tlaloc, which are the gods of war and rain. The god of war makes sense because the Aztecs were constantly going to war to find more sacrifices, and the god of rain also makes sense because, again, like the Incas and the um, Mayas, they would have been very heavily focused on agrarian society. Um, sacrifices were always in public, and the priests would carry out the killings on the tops of these massive temples, and everybody would have to come see it. Um, they believe that Aztecs sacrificed as many as 10,000 victims a year, which is insane. Um, and basically their whole idea is that humans are tiny and insignificant compared to the gods. We don't matter. So basically we, the, the Aztec people would sacrifice to them and they didn't really expect anything in return. They didn't think that they were going to offer favors or protection, but they thought if they ignored the gods, then they would definitely be killed. A couple of Aztec gods, we have Coatlicue, she's the earth goddess, and that's her right here. Um, Huitzilipochtli, the god of sun and the god of the war. Omet, uh, Ometicutli, he's the creator god. Quetzalcoatl, a uh, god is of twins and learning, that's him down here, the feathered snake. Uh, Tezcatlipoca is the god of the night sky. Tlaloc, god of rain and fertility, which I already mentioned. And Hippitotec, he's the god of vegetation, but also the god of torture and sacrifice. He kind of had a duality aspect here. All right, guys, that wraps up the Aztec, Incan, and Mayan gods and goddesses for you. Please make sure that you take notes on this PowerPoint so that you can take a quiz. Bye.